Hey UMass, this is Brittany Collins for UMass Sports Weekly. And that's right, it's trivia time. Here's tonight's question. The UMass tennis team had the most amount of wins this season since what year? Is it A, 2001, B, 2008, C, 2005, or D, 2012? Tweet your answer to at UM Sports Weekly for a shout out on next week's show. This is Brittany Collins on UMass Sports Weekly. Men and women look to keep a winning streak going this weekend as the team hosted Marist and St. Bonaventure at Sortino Field. Our own Philip Sanzo was there with the coverage. It was a beautiful day for softball this past Sunday when the men and women hosted St. Bonaventure in the final game of the three game series. The men and women flexed their muscles early when Bridget Lemire launched this two run bomb to dead center field. Later, Kiana Diaz Patterson, well, she did the same. A line drive over the right field wall for her ninth homer of the season. Caroline Raymond was close to unhittable, going six innings before giving up a hit. With UMass up 5 0, St. Bonaventure began to make things interesting when Kay Sinclair's hit made it first and third with only one man out. That rally ended abruptly, though when this 6-4-3 double play ended the ball game. The final score was 5-0 in favor of UMass. The men and women shut out the conference rival Bonnies for their 14th win of the season. Welcome back to UMass Sports Weekly. We're here for the softball segment, and that's with our experts Kathleen Harkins and Phil Sanzo. Welcome, guys. I'm going to start with you, Kathleen. What have the men and women really improved on since last week's game? We've seen a lot of success as of late, so tell us a little bit about that. Um, overall, I think they've definitely improved on their fielding skills. Um, we saw with Mark John Louis' clip of errors last week that they weren't doing too well. Um, we did suffer a tough loss on Thursday, 11-1, to um, with the Marist game, but I think that they've definitely improved on their fielding either way. Um, for example, in the second inning, number 52 for Maris went up to bat and hit the ball towards um, shortstop Quinadios Patterson, who made a strong throw to first baseman Bridget Lemire for an out. Um, then in the top of the third, number two for the Red Foxes hit a line drive, and second baseman Whitney Cooper, who made a nice throw to first. Um, then the improvement continued into the fourth inning with Caroline Raymond making an amazing grab to her left on a line drive and robbing number 52 of at least a single. So I think if they continue to do as well as they have in the field like during that game, even though they lost, they'll um, continue to do pretty well for the rest of the season. All right, great. Yeah, we've seen a lot of uh, improvement. Obviously, yeah. at the beginning of the season, they were not half the team that they are nah, now. No. Um, I noted the, the winning streak before, so obviously they have been improving, and it's been <laughs> great to see. Phil, you noted a player who's really been responsible yeah. for, for the success as yeah. of late. I'm going to talk about the curious case of Caroline Raymond. Really? <laughs> I like that, Phil. Before this, before this winning streak, the, in the last seven games, UMass is 6-1 and one right now. Before that, they were 8-19, and 19, and I feel Caroline Raymond really is the deciding factor. She's a starting pitcher. She's the best pitcher they have on the squad. Before, the, before this, these past seven games, when the men and women are 6-1, and one, um, her ERA was 5.64. That's a really high ERA. It was contributing a lot to their losses. UMass was getting blown out in just a lot of their games. But in these last seven games during this win streak, her ERA is down to 1.74. So wow. she's really dominating these pitchers. She's, she, she's dominating the batters, and she's controlling the game. She's, she's limiting the runs. Because really, UMass has not scored a lot of runs all season. In this win streak, they're averaging, I think, like five runs a game. And that's enough right now. Early in the season, that wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. They were getting blown out like 11 to 5, 13 to 5, because none of the starting pitchers were getting anything done. Now Caroline Ramey is stepping it up, and she's, and she's throwing strikes. She's keeping, it, she's keeping um, the, the runs down, going the whole length of the game. She even had a no hitter against URI back on um, April 14th. Yep. And she actually, in this past game against St. Bonaventure, she had no hair going into the seventh inning. So really, she's controlling the game. She's limiting the offense on the other side. And it's helped, the, it's given the men and women a lot of confidence going into the games. We had discussed it a few weeks ago. Men and women need these 
this, this confidence from these really bad teams like URI in order to get going. And they beat St. Bonaventure and it's propelled them to like the middle of the conference, um, into like the middle of the conference. They were almost dead last and now they're like in the middle. I think they're fifth or sixth right now or seventh in the conference. They're in that middle range. And a lot of that is due to Caroline Raymond, in my opinion. Well, in the past, their success has always come from having a dominant pitcher. Yeah. And if Raymond can be that pitcher, I think it really does a lot for the team going forward. Yeah, she's stepped it up a lot. It's a big help for them. Well, that's great to see. And maybe they can they squeak into the playoffs? Or? Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. They got a lot. They got very good teams they're facing coming up. At least St. Louis is one of them, and Dayton's the other. And they're one or two in the conference. So they might not be too successful going further, but they're doing a lot better than than they were. So we'll see what happens. Anything can happen. It's baseball, a little softball, but it's like baseball. Exactly. Thank you, Phil, and thank you, Kathleen. I really appreciate uh, you guys, and I really like to see improvement, especially with yeah. a team that was so down in the dumps at the beginning of the year. Absolutely. So uh, we're pushing for them. Absolutely, Chris. All right, guys, stay tuned, and we'll be right back with Women's Lacrosse, the best team on campus, as we talk about every week. So stay tuned for that.